Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I am here with Rupan the Third, Part Four, Episode Number Eleven and Twelve Reaction. All right, the previous episode, um, we get a Guemon centric episode. Uh, it was like the episode was uh, centered around him and a person uh, called Belladonna. I think that was her name, and uh, we get to see how he was like you know like went to one of the previous gatherings of like a lot of assassins gathered and there was a person i, I forgot the guy's name but he you know tracked him to like you know kill someone and belladonna was one of them and that's how they got to know each other but now that person is back and they're killing everyone and uh, you know like all these things happened and by the end of it we actually get to realize that it was not that person who came for revenge but belladonna taking out all the uh people all the assassins present there just because that guy does some shady stuff and she doesn't want he doesn't want them alive uh, unfortunately she wasn't able to kill goemon because she was attached to him and by the end of it you know like goemon goes and tr tries to save her she's taken hostage but he, she kills her boss herself and that's how it ended and uh, yeah it was a happy like you know ending you could say and uh, yeah, she's doing her own thing. Goemon is doing her own thing. That was the whole episode. And, I, you know, like, <laughs> Goemon suddenly just went missing after the first episode. Now he's back again. I'm guessing we're going to get more of uh, his episodes in the future. Uh, you know, like, as we go, move forward. That was that. Episode number 10 was the episode where Rupan goes to, uh, like, you know, goes with both Rebecca <laughs> and Fujiko. And both of their like you know goal is like the wine the i forgot the name of the wine but it was like one of the price like you know one of the most expensive wines and stuff happens they get <laughs> hit by like a you could say love potion and both rebecca and <laughs> fujiko were on top of rupan completely and uh, by the end of it we get to realize that the person who made the wine was trying to get it back because there was a big secret hiding in it it was his bro his wife's body most probably and she pro most probably killed her when she did not want to keep continuing to make the love potion wine or whatever so yeah by the end of it we got him and uh, yeah that's how it ends so let's see what this episode brings these two episodes this is episode number 11 so yeah let's begin i'll be putting the subtitles on the time right here Think it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> okay. All right. Oh, damn. Oh, it's Rebecca, isn't it? Oh, yeah, the whole thing with the dream of Italy or something. Okay. So it was Rebecca, I'm guessing, the, those visions that we get. Okay. Hmm. Oh my god. <clears throat> Damn. Oh boy. Well. That was fast. I didn't realize she would be able to get there in like one night. What the? 
Oh no. Oh my god. Oh. Oh boy. Well, now what? Oh great. Oh yeah, he contacted Lupin. I guess yeah. Like you need some lead to actually follow them. And I guess Lupin's group is the best one to do that. All right, let's see. So <laughs> Rupan is going to is the dream of it part one. Oh, this is a two part. This is a two part. Okay. Oh yeah, that's true. Like they're the MI six, so that's why. Yeah. Ah, back teeth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, that book where she got the clue or whatever. Hmm. What on Japanese? Ah. Okay. Cerebral cortex, hippocampus. Okay, there you go. I'll give you a sense of it. Under the... Oh, what? He was able to understand it that... Three towers of sun man, just side by side. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. That you tell a little bit. Hmm. Okay. Oh, so that's how you could. All right. Maybe like a secret passage or something. I don't know.
<laughs> oh boy. Oh yeah, this guy. It's the boss, isn't it? Oh my god. Oh wow. Oh god. Really troublesome security system. Hmm. Wow. The, even the vent has like what? My God. Hmm. Thirteen agents. This uh, still is quite less. Thirteen. Okay, I guess. Uh. <laughs> oh okay so it's an easy job i guess for her at least is this rupan in disguise I don't know. This might be Rupan in disguise, disguise, or is this Anigata? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah? What is... I think that was Rupan, wasn't it? In Zenikata's disguise? Oh my god. N Nyx is also here. Yeah, these are tr highly trained individuals. That's why they have like 13 of them. And this guy himself is like very capable with his power. All right, let's see. Damn, it's like sniper rifle ready. It Oh, maybe that's not Ruban. Where for the Ruban? What? Is this, oh my god, is this Rupan calling him? This is, this is Rupan calling, isn't it? Oh my god. Ah. Uh, wait, where's the, yo!
Wait, did they, oh my god, did he call him as well? Damn, what the hell? Yo, the animation. Wow, the animation is. Oh my, I feel like Ruban also called him as the boss and told the same thing that he told Nyx. Says so something like, oh, oh my god, here we go. He's double playing them. Up. Wow, oh my god, he's playing them. Like making them fight against each other to take them out. What the hell? Run! Oh, okay, no. <laughs> I was like, you run. Okay, <laughs> damn. Well, this is a trap in itself. Oh boy, no more response. <laughs> well, there you go. Just played you completely. Oh! Well, yeah, he called you. Yeah. So what did he do to the actual boss? Oh. Oh my god. Oh boy. Okay, so this is how they took over the. Alright, and that's how he inter anticipated the call. Yeah. So, who. What about Zenigata? Was that the actual Zenigata? I think so. There you go, he told everyone, each and every- oh my god, wow. Yeah. And the actual director is just sitting and doesn't know anything about this. Well, we at least got her out of that. What? Oh my god, more reinforcements. When? Oh god. Um, now what? Let's run. Oh, is that Zenigata? Oh no, it's him, okay. Wait, what? Whoa. Oh my god. So that was a bomb. Here we go. The whole... Yeah. It's okay. Oh boy. Oh my god, here we go again. <laughs> this guy, he's like, what's happening? <laughs> Hmm. 
Yep. Yeah, so him being in this mode is even more dangerous. Yeah, 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 let's get out. Oh my god. God damn. Oh. Well, at least the reinforcements are gone now. Like, we have to deal with one person, but still. Oh my god, okay. I'm guessing the Italian dream has something to do with this. Like this, him being like in a berserk mode, probably has a big secret. Rat. Okay. <laughs> well yeah we need some answers <sighs> no yeah it's something else nope well, yeah. Um, wait, I thought the oh. Oh boy. Rebecca was trying to figure out. Oh. Yeah. Like the the dream of Italy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Well, here you go. <laughs> yeah, they cannot even say anything. Like this is their problem and they need to, oh boy. Diplomatic problem. He's probably going back to his house now, trying to f like you know the bomb and everything. I don't. I don't think there's a bomb in it. Like it's probably a fake one. Okay. All right. So that guy, the scientist person, knew something about the uh, the dream of Italy. He took his life. Rebecca started trying to find out about the uh, dream of Italy after that. MI6 knows what the dream of Italy is. It's a huge secret and they're keeping it under wraps. They don't want it to come out to other people. Nix goes berserk. 
quite a few times whenever this okay that's it there's situations you know like we saw and they make it their topmost priority to stop him even if they have to kill him so what i'm trying to like i don't know i get this feeling that there's something related to this dream of italy and uh nix is uh going crazy you know the bloodshot eyes getting superhuman strength and everything and he even has that like you know like that a few extras um powers as we saw you know she can he can kind of track where people are using like you know like a, a supersonic sound that kind of thing he can do calculations i think that's probably like a i don't know precognition type of power where he just calculates stuff and realizes how the future might play out that type of a thing so like i might be completely wrong here but i don't know i'm i'm guessing i'm thinking that there is some kind of relationship between the dream of italy and nix's powers that's why you know whenever he goes crazy they, they always try to stop him making that the first priority we saw and like he said in the end that this might become a diplomatic problem like why else like would why would it become a diplomatic problem mi6 is one of his agents you know like nix is part of the mi6 one of his agents so even if he goes crazy even if he goes berserk what why would it even become like a diplomatic problem it's probably because there is some kind of a relationship of that with i don't know the dream of italy or something maybe it like it is some kind of a um i don't know some kind of a um, something like that that bestows power on on others or something i don't know we'll see but okay now we begin with rebecca trying to find out uh the secret in the book and uh, she's trying to decipher it and she realizes the, the one of the pages it, look you know like it, it comes up and he she realizes that where the the push where the part, uh, place is where the clue is pointing towards and she goes there now like that's what i'm saying you know like the dream of italy um obviously it's something that um but but i guess it, it is kind of like obvious by now that uh mi6 obviously is trying to stop anyone from getting to know what the dream of italy is and rebecca uh is also trying to find what that is because the person she liked took his own life so that's how this whole thing is connected and obviously rebecca is going to go to that part and somehow you know like bad luck i'm guessing she arrived at that abandoned place when the mi6 were coming out so so many interesting things here first of all uh later on this the, the butler guy he found went to that place and found out that there's nothing in there you know, no 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 type of thing that's kind of interesting because i'm guessing that would mean that it has like a secret like, you know, chamber or something like you know i don't know like some kind of a secret otherwise why would they go into an empty house you know so either way uh, rebecca gets captured and you know there's these two like these, these mi6 like you know these people are highly trained like these are not like some ordinary goons so you cannot actually like you know it, it's quite difficult to even take two of them out so yeah that's why rebecca wasn't able to do anything she tried to like you know kind of save herself but unfortunately got knocked out and thankfully the butler saw that and uh, the first thing that he did is called Rupan. <laughs> obviously because he, he, they cannot go to the police the police cannot get involved in this so Rupan and his crew they you know the uh, the butler comes and they he gives him the the tracker the tracker information where rebecca is and uh, you know like asks him for help gives him all the information gives him the book everything and says like what should we do and how can we save him obviously rupan rupan is intelligent she, the first thing he did is like look at the book and he realized what the actual hint was the hint was 
there is um three towers i think that was what it said and the riddle said that the fourth one is a place you know like kind of hinted to a that place so obviously like you know if, if it's like a fourth tower it could be anywhere you know like uh the three towers were at equal distances so you could at least kind of try to make an equal distance and try to find out where the fourth tower is and the the sta the what was the name of the statue um is it the goddess of liberty there you go um statue della liberta in piazza della liberta so this statue the way it's looking towards that is the direction in which the the, the place is so all inter the kind of all the place where it intersected that's the place and that's how rupan was able to find out which um place uh, rebecca went to now here we get to see not see but get to hear about this person uh this genius scientist well wait where is that part just a sec okay this was left by a certain japanese man who is no longer with us which is probably the same person that rebecca you know is we got to know later on he was a genius scientist well versed in everything from psychology physics astronautics and more he was particularly okay this one he's particularly focused on neuroscience like you know this what is interesting about this part this part gives us a huge hint that this guy might be the one who made this dream of italy like i'm just making a guess here complete guess you know made the dream of italy and the dream of italy is some kind of a like a i don't know a drug a stimulant something which does something to the brain like he, he's saying here he was particularly focused on neuroscience you know an expert on hippocampus and cerebral cortex and everything related to memory oh but uh, memory i don't know i was going to say like since he knows a lot about the brain maybe the dream of italy is some as like i said some kind of a drug or something which does something to the brain and gives you these type of powers which nix has you know i'm i'm i don't know like and i don't know why but i get this feeling that whichever power nix has it is something it has something to do with the dream of italy that's why i'm, I'm kind of thinking like you know maybe this is the person this guy who made this dream of italy probably realized by the end of it that like something went wrong or something happened and like you know fell into despair took his life you know and but but the dream of italy existed even then and that was taken by the m16 and probably they're like you know researching on it doing something and nix is a person who is like you know like probably like a i don't know like a test subject on of the dream of italy and that's why he has these type of superpowers He's like, you know, he goes berserk most of the time. And that's why the, the boss, the director is so afraid of him because if somehow this goes out, it'll become a diplomatic problem because, you know, the dream of Italy is involved in this. Like I said, this is a whole complete guess, but I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out to be something like that. Because this part, like, you know, when he says like he's an expert on the brain, that part kind of is a little bit fishy that's why i'm thinking maybe he is probably the one who made this thing and that like you know this dream of italy is something that bestows power on the people because you know how can you get powers like this it has to do with the brain you know like, you know you you like, for example how he was seeing things in slow motion you know how he could like you know kind of calculate stuff so quickly you know definitely has something to do with the brain and this guy is an expert on the brain so that means this plus this means that it has something to do with the dream of Italy, which probably is the thing that made Nix this type of a superhuman being. I don't know. This is just a guess. I'm guessing, but we'll see. Either way, um, <clears throat> Rupan finds out where they should be headed. And OK, this guy says that uh, he went to the deserted house where Rebecca went and there was nothing, which is really really weird because there should be something otherwise why would the m16 come out of it there was like a like a fireplace in that house i don't know why but whenever i see fireplaces you know like 
I, I always think there must be some kind of a hidden mechanism on it. You know, like when in, in a lot of movies, animes, even in games, a lot of like you know hidden mechanisms and a lot of you know like secret compartment, or secret parts are either in like a fireplace or like in a bookcase. <laughs> These two are like the main places. Like you know, like underneath, like you know, the, the, the upper part of the fireplace, there's usually like a like a button or something which they put and like a like a secret compartment opens up, something like that. <laughs> so whenever I see like a fireplace or something like that, and there's like a closed room mystery or whatever, I'm like there must be some kind of a mechanism in that fireplace. <laughs> I don't know. Like who knows? Maybe there's like a like I said, there's a button in this fireplace in the underside of the fireplace, which you if you click on it, uh, like a like a secret tunnel opens up, which goes underneath underground, and there's like a like a tunnel from this place to some other place, or like a secret underground compartment where I don't know, maybe they're doing some kind of research on the dream of Italy or something like that. It won't surprise me. Uh, the butler just saw that place. He didn't go and investigate that place. So who knows? Maybe. Either way. Um, okay. So Rupan is like, all right, let's get her back. And uh, wait, one thing. Wait, are they in the Colosseum? The place where they're keeping Rebecca? Yeah. No, wait. Okay, this guy, the director, says like, has she admitted anything? And then we see, that's the Colosseum, isn't it? Yeah. And then they show the Colosseum and they're like, no, she has not said anything. So I'm guessing that the, the, the secret hideout was in, in the Colosseum or something? Anyways, um, so yeah. Um, oh yeah, it is in the, oh God. yeah it is in the colosseum okay there you go uh, after that you know like we get to see the butler giving them the blueprints and there was a correct me if i'm wrong i think that's a colosseum isn't it like, if it is a colosseum then it's crazy that they're actually doing these type of things underneath maybe underneath the colosseum how <laughs> anyways i guess they are the m16 they can do anything yeah like yes anyways um so all right, so um, they're, kind of, they're kind of trying to torture Rebe uh, Rebecca, trying to get out the information from him. And obviously the director says, like, uh, like, you know, like bring out the information from her and then kill her. We don't want anyone to like, you know, survive after knowing the secret. And uh, the butler brings out the blueprints and he says that this place has a lot of security, it's retina authentication and hidden at the entrance behind the ruins. Okay, um, passageway to the confinement room, completely covered by security cameras, as well as infrared detectors. And the floor of the confinement room fitted with weight detectors. So yeah, that's what's happening. The vents, not I, I doubt that that's like a vent or some kind of a thing. That's also filled with all infrared lasers. So it's, it's crazy to get in. Is really uh, difficult. Now he also says that there are thirteen agents stationed there, which I thought like thirty. That's kind of less, isn't it? But like he said, these are highly trained individuals. Each and every character is can actually hold their own. They can hold their own in a fight. So is these thirteen agents are dangerous. So Rupan <laughs> makes like a mental blueprint, I'm guessing, and he comes up with a plan. Cause um uh because fujiko and at first fujiko was like nope i'm not going to do it it's dangerous but then when rupan tells her what she has to do she's like wait is that easy and he, uh, rupan is like yes that's all you need to do all right next scene we see zenigata in the colosseum and here i was thinking that this zenigata was like in rupan in disguise like Otherwise, like, you know, he brings like a card, like a, like a, the calling card with Rupan on it. I was like, I was thinking, why would he even bring a calling card? You know, like, well, like actually, like, you know, issue a calling card because that would make this even more difficult, wouldn't it? Like, they're trying to rescue Rebecca. They're not trying, they're not trying to steal something. 
So this would make it even more difficult. That's why I thought maybe this is Zenigata and he's trying to trick them. Uh, maybe this, sorry, it's Rupan in Zenigata's disguise. And that's why he has the card with it to kind of make uh, more these guys more confused and, you know, like try to trick them. By the end of it, I realized that that was Zenigata, that was not Rupan. Like, <laughs> oh. either way, Zenigata comes in and he's like, Rupan has called, given out a calling card, and but the MI6 guy was like, oh, it's okay, no problem. Rupan is, it must be a, just a joke. And Zenigata's like, a joke? Wherever Rupan is, there's treasure. So, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the guy contacts the director, and the director is like, do not underestimate him. Now, here in the in, in, in like a little portion, we get to see that the butler is has like a where is that part like a uh, suit, not a suitcase, but like a red, yeah, red suitcase. And he is thinking about something which I, I did not realize what he's actually trying to do here. Now, I do wonder if this suitcase actually contained a bomb or that was just a big fluke that he did. So, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Either way, you know, like he, he, he probably planted that near Nix's house. So, everyone's ready. Everyone's ready in front of the, like, you know, like of, of, of the confinement chamber. Like the security cameras and everything is just there and i love how <laughs> like rupan actually did the job like he himself did nothing he actually made them fight against each other and uh, like like you know like like that director said do not trust anyone but the fact is like everyone made a big mistake here is that they actually trusted the director as well like you know like the director told to everyone to trust none but after that, like when they get a phone call, when phone uh, Nix gets a phone call, like you know what what it, when it really made me uh, what can I say suspicious of the situation when the director said that oh like you know kind of go, like you know go in a private place I need something to tell you that I was like why would he do that you know <laughs> but either way Nix went away and you know like Rupan here which is in director's voice tells him that do not believe anyone. You know, he's already probably in like you know Rupan got here before the previous night so get Rebecca and get out of there he said the same thing most probably to each and every agent <laughs> oh my god the crazy thing here is Nix like I like, you realize why he told Nix to go in a private place because he wanted to create that distance between like obviously he did not want the others to hear as well like he was calling everyone probably almost at the same time just kind of like doing a little um like you know simultaneously like, you know what he did here is like if nix was there you know with that guy obviously he cannot call the other guy so he told him to make take a distance be like you know, kind of go in a distance there was like a distance there now when he called both of them post probably and told them the same thing that Rupan broke in here previously do not trust anyone get Rebecca and get out to this place told everyone the same thing all the agents were like all right let's go and bring Rebecca out so the distance was there Nix tries to go back and the guy who was already posted in front of Rebecca's chamber you know like he's at a lot closer distance than uh, Nix was so what he did as soon as he kept the phone down is try to open the door because he wants to go and bring out Rebecca, take her out. While he was clicking on that door, <laughs> Nix comes in and Nix thinks that he's trying to take out Rebecca and that's Rupan. And he's like, what are you doing? And obviously the, the guard there, he's, he realizes that, oh my God, like this might be Rupan. This might not be Nix. Otherwise, why would he suddenly go away? And both are kind of suspicious. Nix is suspicious at him why he's trying to open the door. And he's suspicious at Nix. That's what happened. Like, you know, this whole thing. So, it's crazy how he did it. And <laughs> obviously, Nix would win here. Nix is a lot stronger. So, Nix just goes in and <laughs> knocks him out. That, that part was crazy, the animation was really nice, you know, the way they did it. 
and uh, Nix goes in, Nix gets Rebecca, tries to get out, and now obviously all the other agents are like, oh my god, this must be Rupan, trying to get Rebecca out. So everyone's just trying to get Nix, and Nix is thinking that these are all like, you know, Rupan's people or something like that. And <laughs> oh my god, they just start fighting against each other, like Nix comes out, gets in the uh, car and just drives away. Obviously, Zenigata is like, you know, kind of looking at all of this from the outside. And here you go, Nix <laughs> comes to that designated place, tries to call the director, it's not like, you know, connecting, obviously, because that was Rupan. And Rupan gets Rebecca and comes out of the car. <laughs> and oh boy. Now, Nix is here, Nix is like pointing their guns at them. and. Uh, when he tries to shoot, uh, uh, Goemon cuts off all the bullets, and uh, Nix is like, "How were you able to do it?" So Rupan says, like, at first he, like, you know, like, told uh, Fujiko to go, and obviously that guy who was uh, with the, the the what do you call it, the electricity thing, you know, like he, she, not what was that, the security grid, wasn't it? Okay, here we go, the satellite communication. Sorry, not electricity. That's like communication. That's how he got them. You know, to, uh, put uh, Fujiko over there and uh, got control of the sa satellite communications, and that's how he did it. So that was like an, one of the most easiest way they were able to get out of such a highly security filled uh, place. So yeah, now obviously Rupan is like, what will you do? We are so many of us here. You're alone, but. It's crazy to see, like, this shows how highly trained these people are, these MI6 guys. They got knocked out by Nyx, but I'm guessing they probably woke up as soon as possible and just rushed in here after realizing what's probably happening because there are only 13 of them and Nyx probably knocked out like five or five of them or something. So all of them got up and just came here. <laughs> so yeah, 13 versus five and these people are really strong. So what do we do now? Um, in comes the butler and he's like, here you go. I have planted a bomb in, in front of your house. So yeah, like, you know, just like how you are tasked to get Rebecca, I'm also tasked to protect her. So that's why I'm here. Like this guy now, obviously Nyx is, go, goes crazy because Nyx told before, don't like, you know, involve my family into this. Now, this is one thing that I feel is very um, hypocritical in my opinion. Like, first of all, um, like it's, it's nice to see that Nyx cares about his family. That's all well and good. But it's so hypocritical that he is talking about his own family, but at the same time, he doesn't care about taking someone else's family. Like, that's what I'm telling you, like, it's so hypocritical. Like, this is the hypocrisy in this. He goes crazy whenever someone involves his own family in, like, you know, his situations. But he, he doesn't care, like, you know, like, when he gets someone else's family involved. So, that's what I'm talking about. Like, these type of things, you know, these type of crazy... Um, like you know these type of secret investigations or secret agent jobs and all you know whenever you get into these you should realize that you know like you are actually putting your family in danger as well you know like because you are part of like a secret organization you will have a lot of enemies and a lot of enemies might try to get your family to get to you so that's one thing that he should realize number one number two He's involving other people in this, but whenever his own loved ones gets involved, he goes crazy. Like that's why I'm saying it's hypocritical. It's nice, you know. It's really nice to see that he cares about his family like that, but at the same time, you know, like it's kind of hypocritical in in this if you think of it in this way. But either way, you know, like he he obviously he goes crazy here, and uh, you know he kind of goes berserk again. Now, it's crazy to see how everyone was, like, you know, just, like, the priority, like, you know, like, rankings in this whole situation was crazy. As soon as he went berserk, the director was like, leave everything, try to stop him. That was the first priority. They even, like, you know, decided to not pay attention to Rebecca, who has a lot of secrets with her, you know about the dream of Italy and they decided to focus on Nyx at that moment which is a little bit unusual I, I also thought about it because I was like wow so whenever Nyx goes crazy the first priority falls on stopping him 
which means something crazy is going to happen like like the director says in the end that this might become like a political uh, like you know diplomatic situation i don't want to go in that there so that's why I'm thinking like most probably whatever this dream of Italy is, is somehow related to Nix and the superpowers that he has is somehow gotten by that dream of Italy. He got it by using that or something. I don't know. That's why the director always tries to stop him. You know, otherwise the whole secret will come out. Something like that. Either way, the, like, you know, Rupan was very like, you know, lucky at this moment. He got Rebecca and like, you know, got out of this place. And, uh, yeah, and Zenigata comes in by the end, and Zenigata's like, whoa, you, oh, everyone's just sprawled across, like, like, Nyx has defeated everyone. And Nyx is going somewhere in the car, I don't know where, probably his own house, trying to find out the bomb. And Zenigata's like, damn, like, what happened to you guys? And you guys, M16 were like, this is our problem, don't involve yourself. On the other hand, Rebecca is safe and sound, and uh, here Lupin kind of makes a little joke, and he's like, ha, ah, is this all... Like, you know, kind of like your adrenaline rush thing again. But Rebecca gets mad. She's like, how, what do you know about me? Goes away. And here we get to know that the butler says that uh, this is the person, like, you know, like this is re related to a person who Rebecca loved the most, but he took his own life. And that's where we get to know the actual reasoning why she's trying to find out what this is about. Because she wants to know what happened that she took his own life. And... Uh, yeah, that was a crazy episode. All right, let's begin the next one. I think this is part two of this. Yeah, so this is episode number 12. So yeah, let's begin. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Think it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. All right, so here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Huh. <sighs> Mm. Rap. What? What was that? What was that? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Dream of Italy part two, there you go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Okay. So, did you do it? Who won the bet? Yeah. <laughs>
Wait, he's dreaming. Oh, he's in, even in his dream, he's solving it. <laughs> wow, this is crazy. Whoa. Um, hello? Oh, is this thing? <laughs> what type of dream is this? <laughs> oh, that's Rebecca, isn't it? We are... Wait, what? Okay. Liberty. Wait. Wait, how is he getting the dream? How is Rupan getting this dream? I don't Libertas. There's no freedom in a constructed world. Damn. Making a world from your own hand. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this word he's talking about. <laughs> it's whacking my wig. <laughs> yeah, like, kind of weird. Like, how can he get visions of? This is not a dream. Okay, what is happening here? Wataru Uraga. Wataru. What? Uh That's really like he himself is dead, isn't he? Shadow people. Well they might six? No. People complain when I just gonna There you go. Like I said, like I think Nyx has something to do with this, the, the thing, the superpowers he has. 
Well, this is in his dream or his... Well, you're dead. That's a story, what? Ah, he was assassinated. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. So the MI6 are the shadow people that he's talking about, okay. Oh my god. Yeah, like... <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's true. Oh my god, he Oh, it looks like okay, this Oh, she came here and... Hmm. Oh, who's that? Oh boy. Hmm. He'd be killed by him. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Ah, yeah, 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 makes sense. The the previous episode. Yeah, freedom, like the the way he, she wants to live. Oh my god. Oh my god, he is still in this form. Wow. Like, I, I think you sh he should have first gone to his house to see if they're okay or not. But he's just going after Rupan. Oh my god, is there like a secret passage here? Ah. There you go. I knew there was a secret compartment. <laughs> oh. Finally succeeded. Whoa. Yeah, then my six is going to come here. 
Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're wrong. Is he memorizing it? Oh my god. Yeah, I, I was correct. He he's part of the experiment or whatever. <laughs> he memorized it. My god. Wow. Damn. Oh god. Yep. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yep, he saw everything, so that's why. All right. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, Goemon or Jigen would have been a big help over here. But unfortunately, they're not here, so. Oh. oh my god oh yeah he needs to stop him he calculated it what Wait, does he have some kind of a plan? I think so. Yeah, you know what? Not everything can be calculated. <laughs> oh my god. Uh is this part of the plan? Yeah, he has the plans. Oh, yeah, he can do his his years. Okay. He'll be more affected by it. Okay. Well. Ah. Abilities of a rat. Oh. Oh.
Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, the people from M1. Oh god. Yeah, 0% chance he was correct, I guess. Apprehended. So there's been tranquilized. No! Why did he say apprehended then? They could have just said killed. I, I guess they're not killed, but at least they got hurt, so. Justin Parson, Nicks, ah. Oh. Oh Lord. <laughs> yeah. But he didn't say that Rupan would stop. <laughs> Yeah, it's burning the book. What? Oh, the wine. Ah. Uh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh god Wow, this, this looks like a weird, like, it looks like, like an, it ended, but I'm, I'm sure, like, I know there's, like, you know, like, more episodes after this, but. Okay, so, I'm sure they're going to, like, in the, in the next part, like, this is episode number 12, the later half of the show, I'm guessing we're going to more, go deeper into Nyx and probably the dream of Italy, what it is. And what the MI6 is trying to hide and all that stuff. I was not expecting the turn this took. Like on the whole the inside the memory thing. Like, okay, that that was unexpected totally. I was not expecting that. Okay, that's the end. All right, so we begin this episode with the continuation from the previous one where Rupan is trying to decipher the thing, um, the, the, the hidden secret behind the book. So, <laughs> let's see the Fujiko and <laughs> Uh, Jigen make a bet whether Rupan is going to be able to solve it within one night or something and we see him like you know like doing all the calculations and uh, one of the things that he writes that was a trigger wasn't it which kind of kind of, kind of comes up and becomes colored it's written Ben Benvenito al Sogno del Italia I think that's what it's written here 
yeah which which was the trigger word wasn't it like you know like after he wrote that and he kind of went to sleep uh the, those letters kind of popped up and uh yeah now <laughs> jigen and uh Fujiwoko comes in and they're like what's happening is he dreaming and one interesting thing i realized when which goemon also said Lupin doesn't dream is that true okay that's interesting i guess like like dream i think like dreams are like um something like when people sleep in a very like it's not true that people don't dream it's true that it, it's, it's actually that people don't remember their dream isn't it i think like i've i've seen somewhere like someone some kind of a thing thing like a article or something where it was written that people dream all the time when they're sleeping it's just that they don't remember and very few dreams are the things that people remember you know like the more deeper a person sleep is they don't remember the dream that they're dreaming something like that i think i've read somewhere so it's not that people don't dream it's that people don't remember their dream something like that anyways um so Okay, Rupan is like in this weird dream thing and uh, he's like, you know, going and I was thinking, my God, he's actually trying to solve the puzzle in his dream. What really surprised me about this and is when we like, you know, obviously Rebecca comes in and like, you know, like Rebecca goes like, you know, by Rupan and, uh, you know, like all that thing uh, is happening. And what really surprised me was when we saw Wataru, I think that was his name over there. And I'm like, wait a minute. Rupan has never even seen this guy. How can he have a dream of him? You know, like I could guess like Rupan probably saw Rebecca's photo when he she was like a teenager. That's why she, she was able to see her. But what about this guy? He never saw him. So why is he in his dream? Which really weirded me out. I'm like, what's happening here? The reasoning behind this is something we get to know later on. But before that, uh, in the dream, we see like obviously we get the whole section where Rebecca is there with the wine and Wataru is like uh, we'll drink it later on you know when I'll be able to buy you the most expensive red wine that's when I'll uh, like, you know I'll be you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll, sh I'll give you the one we'll drink together that type of thing and he also talks about freedom he says there's no freedom in a constructed world so we should make our own world and that's where we'll get our true freedom which is, which is quite interesting here we go the freedom to create your own world with your own two hands that is where lib libertas is so and i think that's it that is what he called the dream of italy okay uh for example red one you choose where the grave varietal and where it's grown and create it completely from scratch that's basically it <clears throat> and uh, okay let's make our dreams come true what dream you need to feel it the thrill and excitement of creating a world create a world is that a dream yeah the dream of italy there you go so okay so i was kind of cor uh, incorrect i was talking about how the dream of italy was like some kind of a drug or something <laughs> Uh, it sounds like that you know like like dream of italy like some kind of a drug or something but either way um it is not that what there's another thing that i said in the previous episode i said like it's either a drug or it's some kind of a mental some kind of a stimulant or something which changes something in your brain which is not completely wrong i would say it's not a stimulant it's not something physical the dream of Italy is just this thing, isn't it? Where he's able to put in like, you know, his own personality in someone else's dream. That's why he's saying like, this is like a world that you're creating or something like that. So this is a dream of Italy. And here you have the utmost freedom, which is something that he wanted to, you know, like wanted to accomplish. Okay, all of this was happening while <laughs> Ruban was getting... <laughs> attacked by those weird slug things i don't know what those were <laughs> okay and obviously jigen uh, and fuji goes like what the hell is happening why is he still dreaming and what's what's going on okay now 
Rupan comes in and this is where I, I was like, wow, what's even happening here? Why is Rupan talking to this guy? Okay, Rupan is like, uh, thank you. Okay, you deciphered it, right? Yeah, the riddle of yours was pretty good, Mr. Genius Scientist. Wataru Uraga. I'm just a worthless researcher. What about you? I'm Rupan third. Mm, okay, all that. Where is that part? Okay, here it is. You said you were waiting for me. What did you mean? Okay, the book contains a record of the memories of my brain. All right, so the book contains the record of the memories in my brain. Oh, so he wrote in the book his own memories of the brain and, and kept a trigger word which would trigger this dream and he will get to the person who triggers it will be able to come into this world. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, the book contains a record of my memories in my brain and data to construct a personification of myself. There you go. Whoever disciples the symbol can temporarily plant my personification into their brain. Which is interesting. So I'm guessing this is some kind of a thing where he put the information in the book. There was like a trigger word. And uh, anyone who deciphers it and finds a trigger word, which Rupan did, by the way, before going to sleep, this whole thing is going to get triggered. And this personification of him is going to come. So, you know, what always really interests me about these type of things, like we've seen these type of situations in multiple animes where people talk about how this is a personification. Like, for example, in Naruto as well, I remember the whole thing with Minato. Uh, like, you know, uh, his personification and Kushina's personification comes and meets Naruto. I always think about these type of situation and I think about it like how if like you know like if these are actually like a uh, cluster of information how can they actually talk with you like here we can see Rupan is actually talking to this guy whatever he's asking he's answering you know which I kind of realize now what that actually is like he said this is a personification so basically it's not him that is giving him the answers all the answers are written in the book what happens here is that that answer takes the form of a person which is him so whenever rupan asks some kind of a question related to the answer the personification answers it for him the personification is nothing but rupan's own like you know thing that he read rupan's own memories or rupan's own understanding of a situation i'm guessing like rupan read the book he deciphered it that means he has all the information and when he gets, goes into this dream, that answer or that information has taken the form or personification of Wataru. So whatever Rupan is asking him, he's answering that question, which is something that Rupan already knows himself. It's just that the personification, like, you know, the, the, the answer that Rupan knows has taken the form of Wataru and that's answering him. Something like that, I'm guessing, which is really crazy if you think about it, like, you know, like, like if it's just a cluster of information, how can someone answer your question? So that type of a thing, like Rupan knows the answer. It's just that the answer that Rupan knows take, took the form of Wataru and that's answering his question. Something like that. I don't know if I'm like, <laughs> talking about something else or maybe this is not what's happening here, but I kind of interpret it in this way. Like what Wataru is trying to say, like it's a personification of him. Like whatever's happening is in Rupan's brain. So whatever he's going through is in his dream, in his constructed world, where Wataru is just like a personification there. He's just there to answer his questions, which Rupan already probably knows. And he asks all the questions here. And uh, he talks about how shadow people are the one who's trying to stop him. And he asks the question, how do I die? And Rupan says, you are killed. Nah, you took your life. And he says like, okay, it's not that I took my life. It's probably they killed me. And they're just making it, it seem as. Now, another thing that he says is that uh, people are after me who? The shadow people, okay. Shadow people, question mark. People copying my research to conduct human experimentation. There you go. People copying his research. Okay. Rupan remembers that girl, um, the one, uh, who's, what's the name of the, I forgot the name, Bridget, I think that was the name. Um, Nix's uh, uh, girl. 
Nix's daughter. Okay, um, so he was she was also being taken by the people who was going to do the whole experimentation on the dream of Italy, I'm guessing. Which is kind of weird if you think about it, because Nix is part of the MI6, and the MI6 is the one who's involved with the dream of Italy. So that means she was Oh yeah, I remember Nix that section when Nix went to those guy and like, you know he was talking about who are the experimental people and that's where he got to see his daughter's picture where he realized that these people who are also working for the MI6 got her his daughter. You know that's why he went mad at that moment. Okay, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Like, so that was like a mistake. They did not know that it was Nix's daughter. That's why they just just took her. Something like that. Like, I was wondering, why would they take Nix's daughter if Nix himself is part of the MI6? So, it was a mistake, I'm guessing. Either way, um, okay, now, she says, that's why I had to leave myself behind in such a way that they won't notice. Okay, so, what, so, that's why he put this, um, weird thing, not weird, but this, this complicated, uh, riddle in the book. Which is going to get triggered if they are able to decipher it. He wanted Rebecca to decipher it. Rebecca wasn't able to do it, but Rupan did it. And that's why Rupan is here. Okay, now he talks about the MI6, how they're actually the ones who will probably kill him. And uh, he says that there's something I want you to do for me, which is probably when he says, like, burn all the things. And uh, the things are getting changed, you know, like, like the, the, uh, since Rupan interfered in it, the MI6 are coming in in this dream. They're trying to, um, you know, kill him or something, and it's going to like you know like the, the the story is going to play out like the way it played out like you know they'll make they'll kill him and make it seem as if he took his life. So all that stuff happens now. Ruban at first Ruban is like, come on, let's get out of here, but then he's like, no, I'll have to stay here, and uh, <laughs> what an interesting thing that Rebecca said. Rebecca, he says something like. Rebecca said that Einstein must be a really lonely guy. And <laughs> this is such an interesting quote. <laughs> because apparently you don't, you can't have the theory of relativity without someone to relate to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, so yeah, Rupan runs away, like, goes away. And Wataru gets captured, killed. And those shadow people put him over there with the Pills, making it seem as if he took his own life and obviously the shadow people are the mi6 now rupan wakes up and he, like you know he realizes everything he wanted uh, well like, you know, understands what happened and this is like a whole um trigger thing that uh, like you know like a like a secret code which has like this personification of wataru in it which he put in the book and which he wanted rebecca to know uh, Rupa knows it, so he could also easily tell it to Rebecca. And as like now, since these two people know about it, Wataru, that's why I told them to burn the book down because if it goes to the MI6, it'll be crazy. So yeah, like all he wanted to do was let Rebecca know at least. So that mission is complete, I guess. Since Rupa knows, he'll tell Rebecca. So that's why he's like, burn the book. I don't want it here anymore. And uh, all right. Now he tells everything uh, to uh, like you know, he took Rebecca. Uh, uh, Rupan takes Rebecca and goes to that is going to that abandoned abandoned building, and he's saying that uh, talks about the whole situation. The personification of himself is there in the book, and he left it for you. And uh, Rupan says that I also realize why you don't drink red wine, and also why you are so freedom seeking. You know because of what are and uh, yeah okay while they're going obviously nix is uh, trying to catch them and uh, <clears throat> the director is like keep an eye on nix try to apprehend him you know like he, he he's gone crazy you need to stop him like i still think there is some kind of a, i don't know like now i'm kind of second guessing myself i was pretty sure that there's some kind of a relationship of dream of italy with uh, nix's situation his superpowers but maybe not like the dream of Italy is something different as we got to know in this episode that it's just like a like a like a place like a world within you which you create or something like that. I think that's the dream of Italy, isn't it? 
so that has nothing to do with the uh, next or maybe no okay okay i think the uh, uh, said something like if it falls on the wrong hands they might actually be able to manipulate people's memories and make them do stuff so i'm guessing maybe that type of a thing is what happened to nix like you know he's crazy like you know power and we got to know he's actually like has the powers of a rat so i'm guessing that was somehow implanted into him using his memory his his brain his brain was done something something was done to his brain which i'm guessing is something that they got to know by trying to research on the dream of italy which is something that also is related to the brain that's what rabataru was saying like you know m16 is trying to use my stuff my thing to do this human experimentation and uh, change it in a very bad way to make it into a weapon type of a thing and so yeah maybe maybe i was correct maybe uh nix's situation is somehow related to the dream of italy like what wataru made is not something that is used to manipulate people and change their memory and change their uh thing and put like you know like a i don't like a like a hypnotic type of thing in him i think that's how it went you know like uh nix's brain it's like in like a hypnotic state where it makes it think that he's a rat that's why he's able to use these rat powers or something and after doing experimentation on this dream of italy or something and like you know taking human subjects as and doing experimentation on them they were able to make nix have those power and that's why they're so afraid of it coming out and people getting to know about it i don't know anyways um so rupan gets into that abandoned building and i knew there was definitely like a hidden thing and the trigger was actually uh, rebecca's voice telling that like you know like saying that word and yeah they got in and there was like a lot of pictures and everything everything was there and rupan said that uh, wataru told me to burn all of this and, and because m16 is after this and nix also comes in and nix is like you have 0% to run away chance to run away which was correct by the end of it as we get to see <laughs> either way um rupan burns the whole place down like you know gets away with uh rebecca and the, he got a little bit of time there because wataru uh, not wataru sorry nix had to go there and kind of memor i guess he was memorizing it memorizing all the stuff in there so it's unfortunate because everything is in what uh, nix's brain that means now like you know like burning the whole place down was kind of pointless i would say like now uh, nix has been captured by the the director he'll probably get out everything from his brain and he'll probably write it down so it kind of defeated the whole point of burning that place down i guess either way uh, nix is after that after memorizing it i'm guessing he he tries to follow he follows rupan obviously his calculations and everything shoots the tire tire goes out rupan and rebecca Rup rebecca's leg is hurt i think yeah and rupan talks about how what he should do with the book wataru told him to burn it but it's on rebecca rebecca's decision and uh, yeah and uh, obviously rebecca kind of sees wataru in rupan now and uh, they try to run away obviously nix is there and Rupan makes it seem as if he and Rebecca is going to run away but he makes Rebecca go using the 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 thing the rope thing and he tries to stop Nix. <sighs> Rebecca calls Rob I think that's the name yeah the butler's name yeah Rob and asks him to go and help Rupan but Rob was going to help but obviously Zenigata and everyone all the crew was like nothing we can do about it at this point like you know we'll have to wait. And uh, yeah nick start uh nick starts fighting with rupan gets his leg rupan falls down is in front of the the statue and here nix is like you have zero percent of running away and that's where rupan brings out the frequency wave generator and he uses it he himself gets affected but at the same time nix is more affected because of his rat property what rupan says and the, the the actual explanation of how this works is quite interesting um okay he says rats rats have a heart rate of 600 beats per minute 
but they only have a lifespan of four years okay because of that because of how the heart beats so quickly i'm guessing that's why he says like uh that's why they can actually see the world in slow motion here we go that's like you you can dodge bullets no wonder you have the abilities of a rat okay um some say that for them the world looks like it's moving in slow motion there you go a high frequency wave lasted only a few seconds for me but for you Nix, obviously since it's in slow motion it must be torture now one part of the mystery is solved he has properties of a rat that's why he can see everything in slow motion and all that still leaves the fact that there are multiple powers with him and that that means he also has like a bats power i'm guessing which where he can actually give that sonar vision or whatever that's called that supersonic wave thing that he does that's a bats power isn't it so he also not only has a rat's power in him he has a bats power and probably like some kind of a being which can does do calculations very quickly that type of a thing as well i'm guessing because he's calculating everything and like you know kind of predicting the future by doing that so he has multiple things in him it's not only a rat that means i do remember him saying like like this is one of my powers which again hints that it's not only a rat within him there's other stuff within him as well so wow that's why he's like a superhuman either way um, Nix is like, my calculations are never wrong. He's quite confident that he, Rupan is not going to go away from here. And that is what happens. You know, like, there's like people, the, the MI6, they shoot them and they're apprehended, both Rupan and Nix. And there you go. He wasn't able to get away from here. Thankfully, like, they apprehended him. They didn't kill him, both of them, obviously. And turns out Zenigata became the savior again. <laughs> He came and bailed out Rupan. <laughs> Damn, that was that was crazy. Uh, I loved how Zenigata was like, yeah, like you know, like let's get Rupan out. And uh, he exchanges Rupan. And uh, one thing that the MI6 says, the MI6 is like, we'll transfer Rupan to your custody, but you have to say that you drop all investigation. <laughs> Zenigata Zenigata did the like, you know clever thing here. He said that. Yeah, for me, I don't care, you know, like everything that I care about is Rupan. So he's with me. I don't care about it. He never said whether Rupan is going to stop or not. He, he, he gave his own, like, you know, version. He's like, I don't care. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> the MI6 were like, all right, fine. But he never said anything about Rupan. So after Rupan gets out, he'll probably just meddle again in this whole situation. So the whole thing is kind of at a standstill now like you know like everything's like rupan is with zenigata um rebecca has burned down the book he she burned down the book nix has been injured and he, she's probably he'll be in custody for a while uh with the mi6 so everything's like in a standstill now i'm guessing that's why like this is like the end of the first part of the uh anime of season four the next part is going to start where we'll probably get into deeper you know like more more deeper into this whole thing oh one information we got <laughs> Rebecca never turned in the marriage certificate. <laughs> she just wanted to just, you know, like, get a hold on him. Um, either way, um, Re Rebecca has burned down the book and uh, she gets to know that Rupan is safe. And Rebecca is like, all right, like, you know, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy all the, uh, like, you know, vineyards in Toscana right now. Like, you know, we're going to make red wine. And there you go, like, like, uh, you know, like Wataru said, freedom, you know, like, re like, you know, wine, making wine yourself, you know, that like, denotes, like, that shows what it's, what freedom is. So, you know, like, Rebecca is like, yeah, I'm free. Which is kind of interesting if you think of it in a different way. Rebecca up until now was shackled by trying to find out what Wataru was trying to do. It was like a shackle holding her down, you guess. She was not free in that sense. But now she's free, you could say, you know, if you think of it in that way. Either way, um, <laughs> Rupan is with Zenigata now. Zenigata has captured him. And I'm guessing he'll probably try to run away <laughs> sooner or later. <laughs> probably try to break out of prison. 
But either way, that's going to happen in the next part, I'm guessing. Uh, the next part of season four. So yeah, that was it. Uh, these two are really good episodes. I like them. The whole secret is, most of the secret is out. There's still a few mysteries left, which I'm sure we'll get to know. But yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching. This is my reaction to uh, Rupan the third part four, episode number 11 and 12. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know and I'll check them out. That's it guys, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next week with two more episodes of Duban the Third, part four. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.